On today's show, I'm going to talk about two things that are the most powerful things in the world and in the universe that are going to be for you to use to be able to expand on everything you need to know about discernment. See you on the show. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Hi, welcome to The Truth Project. I'm Alan Strudwick. And on today's show, I'm going to share two of the most powerful weapons that you could use in anything to do with your life. But just before I do that, I feel very strongly in the spirit that I'm going to share the vision that I had that actually led me onto the path of removing the veil from my eyes when I was in the New Age and heading then towards knowing who Jesus was. So let me just share it with you for a moment. I was actually in a um, seminar as a New Age leader. I was running this seminar, spiritual retreat seminar on leadership. And in this seminar, I really strongly wanted to get an answer to something that had been happening, which I've probably mentioned to you before, but how certain things in the new age weren't fulfilling, not just me, but the results and the fruits and the things that I was seeing in the new age seminars and spiritual retreats I was running. There was a lot of bad things started to show. So I started to question because people have often asked me, what, what made you leave being a leader in the new age and so deceived? Why would you then come across? Because the Bible does talk about a veil that blocks people until they become believers. But I believe that through this vision, God loved me so much. And that's why I want to share it with you, because it's a powerful testimony of how much God loves different people, including me, who is a sinner and leader in the new age and against him and stealing his his bride and his, his believers away from him. And so I'm in this seminar doing a new age practice of all things of where people had to do like a guided imagery type thing. But basically what happened is that while I was performing that for the, for the group and leading them through it, all of a sudden I had an open vision right in front of me. And what it was when I looked and I, it was this whole figure of God and this light shining everywhere coming off him. And when, when I looked and I noticed there was a figure that was actually next to him on the right hand side. Now, that's an interesting thing because you need to remember, I knew nothing of the Bible, never heard anything about the Bible, never heard anything about Jesus in any way. And the Bible talks about that Jesus is on the right hand side of the father. I didn't know that, but there he was right hand side of the father. And then he started, Jesus started to explain things to me about my future, what I was going to be doing, um, not necessarily just prophetically, but just my lifestyle, all sorts of things he now wanted me to do. He didn't in any way say that what I was doing was wrong at that time. He just explained all these amazing things in the future. Now, while I was looking at him and having this vision, all of a sudden he said, I want you to stretch out your hands. And when I did that, these light beams, beams came rushing from him straight into my hands. And one of the things he said to me, he said, from this point on, you won't heal with the other power. That's what he called it, the other power. You will heal with my power. And I was like, wow, OK, this is an amazing spiritual experience that I'm having here. I even felt lightheaded. I, you know, the rest of the room had disappeared when I'm watching this vision. Then he continued to tell me things and, and share about certain things that I'd be doing, almost giving me not a forewarning, but almost like a fortune in, in the sense of the future uh, and foretelling that part of it in that sense. And what was interesting is that knowing that, that I then told you the rest of the story on the first episode, but it was interesting that it was Jesus and it was God that appeared to me. Because you remember, I used to have spirit guides appear to me and they would look angelic and beautiful light and shining everything. So it's interesting that he would think that if he appeared to me, I would then think of him as the real God and the real Jesus. And that's the point I'm trying to point make here. I actually, I don't know how I knew it. I mean, I can even feel it now. I don't know how I knew it. I just knew it was God and it was Jesus. Not a Hindu Jesus, not an avatar, not a dead prophet from somewhere, not a Nirvana Brahmin God or anything. I knew it was God. He, so I had asked 
and he, he met me. Isn't that incredible? He met someone who was totally against him and didn't know anything about him. I knew it was the real ones. And that's just an, just an amazing thing. And I've been talking on a lot of shows about discerning between one and the other. But what I wanted to do is I want to share about two of those things. I want to share a little bit about Jesus because I believe he's the ultimate weapon for anything in our life. And he's the most powerful thing in the universe. The second thing that I want to talk about is the Word of God. And I'm only going to probably use one scripture with that. But I, just to show how powerful and who he, God is and who the Word is and how God, Jesus talks about that He was the Word from the beginning. And I just want to show you the power of these things and how powerful they are. So the first thing, let me just um, share with uh, about Jesus. I'm not going to read many scriptures here. In fact, I'm not going to read any scriptures about Him. I'm just going to tell you what He is, what he is to me and what He is to you. Basically, He is the healer. Jesus is the healer. He comes as the healer. He arrives on the planet. He heals different people. He casts demons out of people with the power that he has. And he sets people free. I mean, what an amazing man and man of God that was. That That's what who Jesus is. He's also the redeemer. He redeemed my life. He redeemed your life if you're a believer. If not, I'll pray for you at the end of the show. But it, he is a redeemer from the fact that he chose not in his own will, but he chose to go to the cross and die for us, die for our sins and redeem us of that. He's still alive today. He was resurrected to the point that we can still repent to him or to our heavenly father. And we are then forgiven because of what Jesus did of him shedding the blood like a sacrificial lamb. There used to be in, in ancient um, times that the, the Hebrews, in order to get rid of sin, had to find the perfect lamb to sacrifice. And when it was sacrificed, that blood of that lamb would cover their sins for a year. Jesus came and became that same sacrifice, but for once and all, not just for a year, but for eternity. So he's the redeemer for eternity. He's the savior. If we call upon his name and say that we for, ask for forgiveness of our sins and make him Lord. And that's a powerful thing because I know what lords were like when I was doing the yoga and doing other things and, and initiating under my guru. I know what the lords are and what that means. So as your Lord, it doesn't mean he lords over you. What it means is that he is there to love you and show you and guide you and show you things if you follow him. If I follow his ways, then I'm I'm trusting that he's going to show me all of the good things and all of the promises. Remember one of the scriptures I mentioned before in Colossians 2.8, where it talks about beware. Paul's saying, beware that you get cheated. Now, what are you getting cheated from? The promises. We have to be careful that Jesus is our Lord, not the um, human potential movement or wisdom of man or traditions of man. We have to know that Jesus is Lord. The other thing is the power. It says that it, Jesus even said it himself, but in his name, we can cast demons out. In his name, we can lay hands on people. It's not our power, it's his power that comes. And the more we yield knowing that it's his power, I believe the more he'll move in your life, the more he'll do things in the sense of, of allowing the power that come from him. If for some reason you do something and you don't feel any power, it doesn't matter. How about a belief? Times I've prayed on people and I... And I've prayed and I haven't felt anything. I haven't felt power. I haven't felt that they got healed. I haven't felt anything. But in my head and in my spirit and my soul, I believe and so I trust that when I did that, God said he will not allow his word to return void. So if I lay hands on someone and say, in the name of Jesus, you are healed, or by his stripes, you are healed, which are scriptures, I know that he's my Lord, so therefore I don't question it. I just follow it. I follow it in that sense. The other thing is that he's part of the Trinity. Jesus is part of the Trinity with Father, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The other thing is that he's not a fallen angel. There's a lot of religions around, even in the New Age, they'll say, oh, Jesus is just another fallen angel. He's not a fallen angel. He's the Son of God. And we're told that in Scripture. He's the Prince of Peace, and he also is the Word. He, he comes as the Word as well. The other thing he is, is that he knew us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. How amazing is that? He already knows you. You need to be encouraged with that, that he already knows you. He knows your desires of your heart. He, he just knows you that well. As you can tell, I'm excited about Jesus. I love him. I, I followed the enemy and I followed Jesus. And I can tell you which is better is Jesus. There's nothing in the world like him and to follow him and to be a believer in that. 
Now, the second thing I wanted to talk about was the word. I'm just going to share one scripture here. And that is that it's in Hebrews 4.12, because I needed to know from God that when I was in situations of emotional pain or grief, or I'm in situations of physical hurt, or that I've got diseases, or I've got other things, I needed to know that besides just him and praying, there was another way, another weapon against those things in my life, against depression or anxiety, or against, um, you know, just things that weren't necessarily happening in my life, against debt, against everything like that. And this was the scripture he showed me. It's Hebrews 4.12 and it says, for the word of God, which is what I'm talking about, the word of God is living and powerful. Another translation says living and active, meaning it's active, it's powerful and it goes out. The scripture is saying that the word of God is living and active, not you or I, but the word of God. And then it says, and it's sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit and of joints and marrow and of the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Let me come back to this other part. Sharper than a two-edged sword, listen to this, piercing even to the division of the soul and spirit. I have emotions which are soul and I have my mind which is soul. But guess what? Sometimes those emotions go crazy. What do I do with them? It says the word of God will pierce between it. Just imagine my spirit and my soul and my emotions. The word of God pierces between and separates them so that I will listen to my spirit and not listen to my emotions. It's the only the word of God. That's how powerful it is. And then it pierces between the division of the soul and the spirit and the joints of the marrow. There's people that I have prayed this over that have had diseases in their marrow, in their bones. And the word of God is the one that's gone in it. It actually has created a difference. Did you know that when we speak, there's power? I don't know if you know this in physics, but when I speak now, it bounces around and does different things. But when I speak, to a human body that has plasma and water. It says that when I speak, the intensity of the sound waves hits the plasma, hits the water and intenses 412 times and also in speed. So when we're speaking of ourselves with the word or speaking over other people, we must know that God has designed so that the healing and the power will actually accelerate when it comes to us rather than when we just send it out, even though that's just as powerful. So I wanted to leave you with those two things, with Jesus and the word. But what I want to do now is I want to pray for you. Just a few, as many things as I can get out to pray for you right now. So again, just wherever you are, put your hand over your heart. I truly believe right now the presence of God and an encounter of the Holy Spirit is coming upon you and will come and fill your whole room, wherever you are, in your car, in your office. It doesn't matter where it is. God will come. Just like in the vision, which you would never expect in any way. He showed up right in the middle of a New Age seminar that I was running. He is going to come to you. He's going to touch you. He's going to, even today, I believe he's going to start to change your life. I believe there's three or four people that have, you've had severe grief. Well, right now, in the name of Jesus, command that grief to leave because it's a spirit of grief. It is not yours. It is from the enemy and it's an assignment and needs to be taken away. I also pray that if for some reason in anything that you've listened to me in this show and even some of the previous ones and you want to repent for it, right now we're going to say a prayer. Father, just so just repeat after me. Father, please forgive me for I've sinned. I've done other practices that I shouldn't have. And I've even strayed from you sometimes. Father, come back to me now and forgive me. And I receive your forgiveness. Father, what I want you to do right now is to touch them and ask. You just ask them, Jesus, come into my life. And from this point on, follow the Lord. Just follow the Lord and what he leads you to do. We'll be back with more of The Truth Project in just one moment. Did you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, 
astral travel, psychic and palm readings, tarot cards, Reiki healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. Welcome back. In the last segment, I was talking about the weapons being Jesus as Lord and also the Word of God and it, and it being powerful weapons to help you in your life. I want to share now for the rest of the segment about a real life history lesson that describes exactly what I'm talking about of how these can be used. There was in, in Numbers 13 and 14 in the Bible, this description of an amazing time of history when the Israelites, the children of God, were taken and rescued out of Egypt and they were taken towards the promised land that God had promised for them. But what happened is that before they went into the land, they were instructed to get 12 spies or leaders from each tribe to go and spy out the land. It was interesting because when they came back, and just hear this based on what I was saying in the last segment, when 10 of them came back, they brought back a negative result. They brought back a report from their soul, from their emotions. Now, I'm just going to remind you a little bit. Remember I told you about the Word of God in Hebrews and about how it talks about it's a divider between the soul and the spirit. We'll come back to that in a moment. So these 10 were very emotional, said it can't be done. We'll never be able to do it. All the negative results. OK, then there was two, though, that stood knowing God's results, the spirit, not the soul, not the emotions, but in their spirit. They knew that God said that they can take the land and that they would take it with him. So they stood in their spirit where these guys stood in their emotions. Now, let me throw an injection here. Today, in today's society, we see this a lot, and it's called emotional intelligence. And everyone's over here in the world, including believers of Jesus, trying to get their emotional intelligence correct. But the thing is, there's something higher than that, and it's called spiritual intelligence. We need to be spiritually intelligent within our spirit. Now, how do we do that? In a situation like this, as I said, according to the Word of God, you need to have the Word of God to divide between, see it's that sharp, it can divide between the spirit and the soul. Why does it divide? So it separates this so we can operate all the time out of our spirit. So let me continue on. Those 10 that brought back their emotional response ended up causing so many things with the people. They caused them to, to cry all night, to grieve all night. They then caused them to actually want to almost get to the point. You can read this in, as I said, Numbers 13, 14, almost be murderous and wanted to stone their leaders. They, they were against them. Now, why were they against them? Because in their emotion, it didn't make sense to go in because they had fear. They had this emotion that was going to probably end up killing them. That's what they thought. They said the giants are in the land and, and it's fortified. Even though God and Caleb and Joshua knew that, they knew from their spirit that they can actually go and take that land. Now, how do I know that? Am I just using these clever words? No, I'm not. The Bible actually says that they had a different spirit, that Caleb and Joshua had a different, not a different emotion. They had a different spirit, not a different soul, a different spirit about them. This is why it's so important that we learn how to divide between the two. We can't, we have to focus not on man's things and emotional intelligence. We need spiritual intelligence. How do you get that? The Word of God. You have to bring the Word of God into situations. So let me continue. So they, they, Joshua and Caleb had spiritual intelligence. They followed God wholeheartedly. Remember I was talking many times about trust. I trust the Lord. I follow the Lord. I trust Him wholeheartedly. I don't just trust Him when things are good. I don't just trust Him when, oh, well, yeah, it's kind of going okay. I trust Him at all times. The Apostle Paul actually said that he learned how to be content when he was without or when he had plenty. See, that's the same thing, loving and following God wholeheartedly. If you follow with all your heart, you're able to move in such a way in your life that it becomes a spirit-led life, a spirit-led life, just like Joshua and Caleb. Now, unfortunately, the emotional ones took over and reigned to the point they didn't end up killing uh, Moses and Aaron and the other. They ended up, though, being banned 
into the wilderness for the next 40 years. And the ones that were the 10 emotional intelligent, if we want to call it that way, because they were right about their emotions. They were right that there's negative results, but they didn't divide or use the word of God to divide to the spiritual intelligence, to understand by the spirit of how to be led. And so these 10 actually, they got wiped out. Joshua and Caleb, though, stayed with the rest and continued until the time after that 40 years, they were able to go into the promised land. And guess who went with them? Joshua and Caleb were with them and went in to do it. So uh, here's the difference, emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence. You need to be led by the spirit in these situations. So if at any time, if any time in your life you're anxious, you worry, maybe you have fear, maybe you're jealous, maybe you have a judgment. If you're going to say an opinion of someone, you got to be careful. That could be a judgment. Sometimes we, we fake and go, well, hey, that's just my opinion. Well, no, it also could be a judgment. If you're tired, if you're angry, if you're frustrated, if you find that your emotions are getting ahead of you and you're so anxious or you're getting to the point where you're like, um, my thoughts and my mind and, and I'm having a, even to the point of maybe an anxiety attack or all those types of things. If you actually go back to the example I had in Numbers 13 and 14, they got so worried and so anxious that they were willing to murder their leaders. Some of you, seriously, right now, I can feel in my spirit, you might even be on the point of suicide. You might be at the point of, I just can't handle this life anymore. These things are too painful for me. I want to speak to you right now, but it's not. That's a demon trying to get a hold of him. We just bind it and cast it away now in the name of Jesus and fill you up with, with joy and peace and everything else because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. But what I would encourage you all to do is get into the word about a situation. You mean I could find an answer about anxiety in the Bible? Yes, you can. Can you find a, a, a Bible verse about fear or worry or, you know, finances or anger? Of course you can. The Bible is full of it if you're just willing to go to it to actually try and find that. So how powerful it is, is if, if we learn, um, as I said before, the word of God is the one that divides. Remember the scripture? It divides between the spirit and the soul. Just imagine something here for a moment. Imagine if your soul was a really big, and I'm just going to say this the right word, but if I was drawing this, that your soul was really fat and overweight, probably 400, 600 pounds. And the reason it's, your soul is so fat looking, if that's the best description for it, is because you've fed it worry, you've fed it things, you've fed it with the thoughts, this might happen, that might happen, just like the 10 spies did. Oh, we're going to get killed or we're gonna, our kids are going to get taken away, our women will be taken away. All the fears and all the thoughts turned into emotions that wanted to end up killing their leaders. Or another point, the emotions got so bad that they wanted to go back to Egypt. They wanted to go back to their actual land that they were slaves in. I mean, how emotional is, run is that? Their emotional spirits were very, 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 very fat in the emotion area of the soul. Sorry, not the spirit, but in the soul. So imagine if you could use the word of God in all those situations, in any instance of the, that I've just mentioned, from worry to fear to anxiety, depression, any of that. What if, now I'm going to put the challenge to you today. What if? The Word of God actually has an answer for you. And then I don't want to, you know, do you to send me something and go, oh, I read the scripture and it didn't work. It's not about that. It is about actually getting into the point of knowing, as I said before, spiritual intelligence, not emotional intelligence. And what you do is you start to actually to like, you know, when you go on a diet, you actually eat less or you take away certain things. The same should be happening with your soul. As you start to reduce and reduce feeding it, it should get thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And then it doesn't become the master over your spirit. You use the word of God to get this thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. And then you feed your spirit and you feed your spirit with the word of God. And you feed your spirit with um, all the promises that God has given you for your promised land. And then you feed your spirit. And before you know it, you have this huge, gigantic giant of a spirit that not only just has faith, but it's filled with the Word of God because it's only, as I said before, the Word of God that divides between these two. So you need to search out things. You need to go into the Bible. You need to find some things that will actually allow you to divide into that. And, um, and, then, and as I said, and then build up your spirit because that divider is that. In fact, the impact is quite transformational. This is, this is kind of the way that I taught myself because when you can imagine me as an ex-New Ager going into church even though they loved me and wanted to help me, I, sometimes I would sit down 
And then people would come in and sit next to me, like within weeks of me just giving my heart to the Lord. And then they would, I'd start talking. You imagine what I was like? Let me tell you. I would talk all the jargon of New Age and all the airy fairy, and I'd go, oh, look at that spirit down there. And I'll look down there, look what's happening there. I literally had people get up and walk away from me in church. And now it's not their fault. It's just I was a crazy New Age leader, and I'd only just given my heart to the Lord, and I needed to learn and re- relearn new things. I'd never read a Bible. I'd never been around people except the New Age people as much as I could. And if I was around other people, I was simply there to bring that Hinduism into um, a practical way, into their sphere of whatever was happening. But we, we need to know that it's, it's quite transformational. I know that, and I'm not going to ever ask you to do anything unless I've done it myself. And I've done that. I have made that commitment. And see, when I make a commitment, I do it. I, uh, I made a commitment once when I wanted to get out of debt and I just went, OK, I can get money really easy and borrow money. So I'm going to draw a line in the sand. I literally went to a beach, drew a line in the sand. I stepped over and made a commitment. I would never borrow again until I'd gotten out of debt. Didn't mean borrowing was wrong, but I knew in the Bible the word said for me, the word said that he wanted me to be the head, not the tail. He wanted me to be to be provided for. He wanted me to be able to do things. So I followed the word in that sense. So if they're they're the two major things I can leave you in this show is about that, is getting to the word so that you can actually use it to divide, just as it says, between the spirit and soul and even physical things as well, because it says that the word and laughter and those types of things can end up being um, in the power of our tongue, either life and death. And so just choose life and choose the scriptures in the Bible that will do that for you. And then get to the point of knowing not only is Jesus your Lord, but you're actually going to follow him. You're actually going to find out what he said, find out his promises, speak those promises over you, start to do that. See, I said in the very first show that I have a fairy tale life. Well, I believe I still do. I have a fairy tale life that God looks after me and gives me his promises. And the most important thing about that, and I believe you have it as well, and that's why I've done the show so that you would totally understand this, is that you have access to it, and I believe it's to, through two things, making Jesus your Lord and following him, and more importantly, following the word of God. Now, even you or even your friends, if you're ever with anyone or even new age, challenge them to, to do this. This is what God did with me. He made me, he not made me, but he got me to invite Jesus into my heart as a Lord and test him out. See if his miracles were true. See if his word was true. And I said that on the first show. For 12 months, I did that. I tested out his word and every single thing was true and came true. So I want to encourage you again, if you want any resources or information, get to my website, download my app and or email me and I'll see you next time next week. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan. Get questions answered and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.